Hi, Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. One of the breakout stars of the entire MCU is Shuri, princess of Wakanda, sister to T'Challa the Black Panther, and leader of the research technology and development groups of the Wakanda nation. She's highly intelligent, and people wonder who's smarter, Shuri or Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man. Now, the folks behind the MCU have officially stated that Shuri is indeed smarter than Tony Stark. But I disagree. I think Tony Stark is smarter than Shuri, or at least has proven himself to be the smartest in the MCU. For Shuri, she's only been in two movies, and she's done some impressive things, but I don't think she's proven herself to be smarter than Tony Stark. See, I'm a third-generation educator. My grandmother was an elementary school teacher. My mother was an elementary school teacher. I was a substitute teacher. We've taught all types of students through various ages, through various grades, and various subjects. And in my opinion, it's not just the accumulation of knowledge that shows intelligence. It's also the application of that knowledge that shows intelligence. And this is where Tony Stark has proved himself time and time again to outdo everybody in the MCU. So let's go over the history of Tony Stark. Way back in Iron Man 1, Obadiah Stane was trying to get uh, his scientists to secretly recreate a smaller version of the arc reactor. And the scientists just couldn't figure out how to do it. And Obadiah Stane yells at him and says, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. Now, I like to add that along with building it in a cave with a box of scraps, Tony Stark did it with a kit or the uh, car battery attached to his chest. So not only did he have next to nothing to work with, but he was significantly injured and had to lug this thing around uh, clinging on to life. Yet uh, he made that amazing technology. Whereas the scientists, you know, Obadiah saying you're sure that uh, he gave them the best uh, equipment, he hired as many uh, brilliant people from Stark Industries as possible, and of course they got the original art director right there, should be easy to make it smaller. But the scientists couldn't figure out how to do it. Going on to Iron Man 2, we see that various groups all over the world are trying to recreate the arc reactor, recreate the Iron Man armor, and none they can figure out to do it. Even Ivan Banco, uh, the Whiplash, he makes a very close replication of the small arc reactor, but it still has several flaws. Now, let's jump to Iron Man 3. Now, this is about arc reactors, but, you know, the Mark 42 armor was being recharged, but Tony Stark wanted to attack the Mandarin's compound. So he just gathered up the tools from that garage that he was hiding out in, and I, I think he also went to, like, a Home Depot or something, and pretty much MacGyvered his way to various uh, weapons and bombs and blasters and various other things to attack the compound. See, Tony Stark, he can do great things when he has Jarvis or Friday, when he has those holographic uh, schematic designs, when he has his wacky robot assistants, but he's also great when he has next to nothing. No matter what the situation is, just give him a few moments, he'll figure out a way to make something spectacular, whether he has everything or nothing, whereas other people in the MCU haven't been able to do that. So the question becomes, would Shuri be able to do the same thing? If she had next to nothing, would she ride to the occasion? Would she be able to make technology that's just as good as Tony Stark or maybe even better? Or would she fall to the wayside? Now you're probably thinking, hey, she could probably figure out something very impressive because she's so smart and you know, intelligent. However, think about this. A few years ago, uh, my microwave went on the fritz and I was hungry and I had to you know, cook food. I couldn't remember, for the, how am I supposed to cook food? I, I know I used to make food before I had a microwave. I grew up without a microwave. I, there was a way to make food out of microwave. For like a good 30 or 40 minutes, I was like, how am I gonna make some food? And I finally remember, oh yeah, I have a stove in an oven. <laughs> uh, by the way, I probably paced back and forth by that stove in an oven like 12 or 14 times my apartment wasn't really big at the time. So here I am trying to remember how I'm going to cook food when I have food cooking devices right next to me. <laughs> uh, or another time I was hanging out with some friends and we wanted to go see a movie uh, and we knew which theater we wanted to go to. Uh, but this guy said, well, I can't find out the time because my Fandango app isn't working properly. And I said, well, you don't need a Fandango app to uh, 
find out the movie times? Like, yes, I do. How can I find out the movie times out uh, the Fandango? I said, well, just open up the web browser and type in the actual uh, theater name, look up the theater website, and that theater website will show you the times. And he said, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and think about it. How many times have you had to do some uh, addition or subtraction or some type of relatively simple uh, mathematics, but, you know, for the life of you, you couldn't figure it out. You scramble to find uh, a calculator or, you know, use your uh, calculator app on your phone or something like that. It's like you just couldn't figure out something that was relatively simple uh, just a few years ago when we were in school or something like that. See, people get accustomed to certain levels of technology and comfort. Now, let's look at Shuri. Shuri grew up in the best country with the best technology, with the best teachers, and with the most miracle substance in the history of miracle substances, vibranium. So if she's never been in a situation where she had to rely on next to nothing, would she be impressive? Or would she be like many other folks who are suddenly without that thing that they're relying on? I'm thinking about it. Almost everything she's done involves vibranium. Heck, almost everything the Wakandan people have done involves vibranium. So imagine what happens when you take that miracle substance out of the equation. I do mean miracle substance. I mean, it's so for some reason vibranium uh, is near indestructible, but it is unstable at certain sonic frequencies, but it can absorb the kinetic energy of bullets and somehow ricochet off surfaces with his throne, uh, and it can be used for uh, machinery and energy and construction and armor and even fashion. I mean, at this point, they just might as well say that uh, vibranium is pixie dust, you know, actual magic. I mean, think about it. Whatever problem you have, you can somehow add vibranium into the mix. Uh, everything will probably work itself out. So, yeah, Shuri is very smart. I mean, she probably make some new technologies as easy as you or I make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But if taken away with all those fancy tools, with all that fancy tech, and most importantly, without vibranium, would she do technology and get herself out of situations and uh, create things as impressive or more impressive as Tony Stark? Or would she be like that young man with the Fandango app all those world scientists trying to and failing to recreate the arc reactor, or like myself, who couldn't figure out how to cook food, even though many times I was standing right next to a stove. <laughs> so yeah, so until Shuri is shown to be impressive without all the fanciness around her, I still maintain that Tony Stark is the smartest there is. So what do you think, folks? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Did I overlook something? Uh, was there something that definitely proves how ultra supersonic genius that Sharif is over Tony Stark? Or is it a case of just, you know, they're like neck and neck and, you know, like one day she's a little smarter, one day he's a little smarter and things like that? Please let me know. Feel free to say whatever you like in the comments. I welcome all feedback. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight. Thank you for watching, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.